And sales is such a mind game, you know? It's such a mind game, because you're literally just dealing with two human beings exchanging these little verbal strings on these calls and everything. It's just like, you have to be the person that's more aware. You know, I'll just draw this one thing real quick and then we'll move on to the next question. I always like to think of it like this. You know, when you're on the call, like you've got the one human being here, okay, who's paying attention, and then the one human being here, okay, both these human beings are talking to each other, but like who's, who really knows what's going on, right? Who's more aware? Do they know that they're not going to work with you and they're not going to buy and they're not going to go forward and they're thinking that, but they're kind of telling you and they're kind of, you know, gracing you with their presence? Or are you the one that's like, I know this person doesn't think they're going to buy, but watch how I run this call. Who is watching this call? And who is in control? Like, I like to think of it almost like if there was a video camera here and you wrote a script, right? If you were to write me a script, if I, you know, I'm, I've never wrote, written like a script for a movie, but imagine I wrote the script of Tova reaching out to a family member who really did not want to work with her at all, but in a 60 minute conversation, totally turned her around, closed the client, got the deal. What would that version of Tova have to do? What would this person have to do? And how would that script play out? And how could you write it? And if you're thinking like that, you're probably going to win. But most people just get scared and respond, and the other person's controlling them and running the conversation, thinking, ah, Tova, she's trying to break into this whole entrepreneurship thing, but I've already got my business, and I know what I'm doing, but uh. you know, if they're, And they might not be thinking that, right? That most, most of the time, they aren't thinking that, but they're thinking something. And if they're more aware, if they're kind of scripting out the call more than you, then you've got a problem. So I try to be the most aware person on the call, aware of myself, my own limitations, when I make mistakes, when I make slip-ups, and aware of them and where they're at and what they're thinking, and then I start to craft around to get the desired result. So I find that to be a pretty helpful frame to put on the situation. Yeah. Who could be more self-aware? I've Just always found like with existing clients too, like walking them down the road, and you taught me how to do this, but walk them down the road of selling themselves. Like, hey, we did a great job with tax prep. We did a great job with tax planning. Now I think you, know, you need this CFO service or this coaching service. Um, here's the value it can bring to you. And they, it, when you go down that road, of like, we did a great job with tax prep, didn't we? Oh yeah, we did a great job with tax prep. I was really happy with how the returns, and you got them done by the deadline and that kind of stuff. They start selling you, and then when you go to that next upsell, they're kind of like, they just roll with it. Okay, so, so that being said though, and, and along those same lines, then right after you say, you know, we did a good job here, we did a good job here, and I believe that this is the direction that we need to go, then you're waiting then for them to say something like, okay, how much is that going to cost? Or you're waiting that minute <laughs> and saying, well, it doesn't do need you want to know the investment cost of doing this with me? I mean, is that pretty much where you go with that? Go for James? it. I can say it, but you go. Yeah. Uh, it's the same process. Like, it's not going to be as hard because, uh, or not, a, you're not going to be as hard salesy with them. You're not going to be as hard on them because you have that trust. Like at, with the uh, strategy session with the uh, prospect, you know, there's a trust thing of building their trust and getting them, that, them to that point to say yes. You've already got all that. Like they're happy with the work. That's why you kind of get them to say, yeah, I'm happy with the tax prep because they're reinforcing that. Uh, they, they're reinforcing that trust you already have with them as a client. So when you suggest something else, they may or may not agree. And you can have a conversation about that, whether they really need the service or whether the pricing is right but you've got their trust, you've got that bond. Well, and the problem with, with the prospect, and the reason why we have to do the direct close on it is just that, look, if you've done a 45 minute call, that is as, as much pain as they're gonna experience, and they're experiencing it right now. Because you're bringing the pain to the surface and you've outlined it clearly, and when they leave, they're gonna go hang out with their family, see a friend, do something for their business, they're gonna forget about this, and then later when they come back in three days or four days, they might have already talked to another provider, but they're also just not gonna be as hot. They're not gonna be as in touch with the pain, even if you have a check-in call. So that's why we wanna just close it up right there. But with an existing client, it's just really about, okay, clearly you've already provided value, can you provide more? So it's more about the value than it is about like drilling them on the pain and getting them to commit to the first sale. Correct, so after you, you, you kind of, there's your segue then into, this is how much it's gonna cost and is that how you would present it? Um, I really feel like we're at this point and these are the services that are going to benefit you the greatest right now. So going this direction, this is how much that's going to cost. Is that pretty much how you'd word it? Except for the cost part. You know, this oh, is the investment. This is the investment. Yeah, this is the investment. Yeah. Investment. The investment. Okay. yeah. Okay. Everything should be an investment because think about it. Like if a business owner, any business owner just takes out their wallet and pays for your service, they're deciding that they'd rather have that service than the money. 
right? Because they're thinking that they're going to get some return, whether that's a return on their time, return on their emotional anxiety of having to look at their numbers, being able to actually make directly more money. So they're making that investment thinking that they're going to get a return. Okay, and so it's, it is always an investment. Otherwise, people would keep the money. If it was just a cost, that's what people don't understand. Like, it's always an investment because they gave you that. They didn't want the money. And so, but it's just a matter of using that word and framing it that way. So everybody wants to delay from it, right? I'm going to make you reach out to them right now here in a second. Everybody wants to delay from it, but you can't. You, what's going to happen right now in the next few seconds is you're going to have like this. For some of you, there's going to be like a psychological break in a moment where you have to decide what you're going to do, right? And I like to use this uh, a dating analogy because it's easy to understand, okay? So whenever you get like a 16-year-old boy, and I know because I was a 16-year-old boy, and all I wanted as a 16-year-old boy was just to get a girlfriend, right? You got the hormones raging. You don't even know what's going on because you're 16. Nobody ever taught you about hormones. And you're just sitting there, you're just like, I just like girls. I want to be around them, right? But you're, I, I, but you're just too afraid to reach out and ask anybody, right? So imagine you get a 16-year-old boy, and he says, Andrew, all I want, I just want a date. I just want to go on a date with a girl. I just want to go on a date with a girl. I'm like, great. There's a woman at the mall right there. Go up and ask her on a date. <laughs> start freaking out. No, wait, man, I can't do that. I can't do that. Then they think, well, I got to get a nice car. I got to get a nice haircut. I got to go to the gym. I got to get juiced, right? Got a nice tight, you know, black t-shirt, get my muscles showing. Then the girls are really going to like me, right? All these things that they want to do before they can just ask the girl, right? But the best thing that I can do is just go up to the mall, ask 17 women on a date, and in a moment of weakness, one of them is going to say yes, <coughs> right? It's just going to happen, okay? So we all have things that we want to do before we do it. Oh, I got to get my website going. I want to make sure my branding's right. I got to make sure I'm good on the sales call. I got to make sure I know how to deliver, you know? But even to this day, as many strategy sessions, and people don't believe this, right? But as many strategy sessions, as many sales as I've made, I still feel uncomfortable doing a sales call. I still feel uncomfortable doing a strategy session. I still feel uncomfortable at the end asking for the money, sitting in the silence, right? It's never going to be comfortable. It's like if you go to the gym and it's comfortable, you're doing it wrong, right? You're doing it wrong. If you go to the gym, you're like, that was a breeze. I mean, I didn't even, didn't even, you know, nothing, right? You're just not doing it right. So it's supposed to be uncomfortable. Sales is stressful and painful. It just is. Like, it's not, nobody, I mean, I, I don't know anybody that just always enjoys it and doesn't feel the stomach thing, right? Like, it's not a good, that's why people don't do it because they don't have the courage to do it. You know, because it's a lot about the courage. And, you know, so it's, it is painful. And I, the gym analogy is great, because if you're going to the gym and it feels good, it ain't working, right? You're not doing it right. It's supposed to hurt. It's supposed to break you down, break down your muscles so you can rebuild and be stronger than you were before. And with the sales calls, with the strategy sessions, like if you're doing it the right way, even if it's with an existing client, it, you just, you get to those little moments where you're like, oh, I'm really doing this, I'm doing it. Oh, I'm doing it. And it's supposed to just, you're supposed to be right on that little edge. And so once you accept that and you don't have the expectation that that's ever going to go away and you just say, hey, my dreams are bigger than this pain and I care more about success than I care about embarrassment. I care more about success than I care about failure. I care more about success than I care about making a mistake. Then, you know, you just you make the commitment. What you want to do is the, the way you got to frame your whole thinking around this is don't tell them they need accounting. Ask them questions so they tell you they need accounting. Like, so what, what, what are you guys doing to run, like what do you look at numbers wise on a monthly basis? Like how do you guys, okay, the bank account, like, and how many bank accounts do you have? Okay, how many credit cards do you have? How much business debt do you have? How much personal debt do you have? Okay, what do you guys make, you know, obviously I saw last year I did the tax work, but what are you guys making on a monthly basis right now? How much of that are you paying yourself? How much are, are you setting aside for taxes? How much are you setting aside for taxes? Like do you guys run a personal budget? Like, are you guys saving money every month and putting it away, or are you breaking even, or is it kind of going negative and credit cards are filling up? Like, let's just get them naked, right? Right, get them revealing, right? Just like showing you everything. And then anybody feels uncomfortable. You go to the doctor's office, you got the little girdle on, nothing underneath, nobody feels good, right? Same kind of thing. When, when you can see all their financial accounts, everybody gets insecure. I don't care who you are. Everybody does. I mean, even me, right? I mean, as good as my financial accounts look, still, if I was going to like roll them out to somebody, all of them, it's just like weird. It's like, oh shit, this is, you're going to see all my stuff, right? So it's just weird. So anybody's going to get that sense of unease, and then where there are problems, and when people get bigger, there's even more problems, right? Where there are problems, then you start to get insecure, and you get, 
You know, because you make bad decisions. I've made bad decisions, and I've almost made, you know, you, you make bad decisions, and then you almost make really bad decisions, and then there's people that really do make really bad decisions. And so you want to find the pain points, and you want to just press on it. And so I talk about this in the script, just surrounding them, right? When you find those little pain points, just keep at, like, most people, what they do, they find a pain point, and they see the client gets uncomfortable, so then they start asking about other things. When you hear that little pain point, then you start surrounding it, you start stabbing it from different angles, you start trying to like poke it. You know, it's like when you go to the dentist, right? If you say, dentist, I have a, like a toothache right here. He's not like, okay, well, let's go to the other side. He's like, no, is that it? And you're like, fuck, that's it, man. What the hell are you doing? Let's get this, put me on the numbing thing. And, he, and he's like, well, let me just try this. And you're like, dude, stop trying stuff. Like, let's get this thing fixed, right? You're just like panic mode because he's pressing the pain. So that's, that's basically what I would say, you know, in that kind of a situation is when you get on the call, try to find the pain points and squeeze on them. And if you have to go personal side too, it's good because personal side ends up revealing a lot of things that feed back into the business side. So getting into the personal side is gold, right, when you have to. Because if they're saying, well, I don't need, I don't have problems, it's like, okay, well, how rich are you? <laughs> right, but you don't say that, right? You go through the script, but you're kind of making them feel that way, right? Like they go to their friends, like I'm almost doing a million a year in sales, but then you like look under the hood and you're like, you're broke, right? And, and that's not the case with everybody, but a lot of people it is. And then even people that are wealthy, there's all sorts of problems that come along with that too. So I would say, don't tell them that they need accounting. That's the worst thing you could do. Just start launching into questions, launching into questions, 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 questions. And the more uncomfortable the questions are to ask, the better question they are. The easiest way to sell is to figure out what the needs are. Not to think about yourself selling something. It's like, no, 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 like what are the problems? Okay, I found the problem, then to attach the solution. Problem, solution, right? Problem, solution. And until you find the problem, you can't do it. So the only reason you should change the solution is if you discover a more painful problem that you think they're ready to pay for now. And I put those up there, right? So if you're going for a roadmap or a tax plan, you might decide, oh, um, actually right now, like this person is hot off the press. Like they are ready, they're even saying they want a CFO, they're saying they're ready to pay, they're saying that they had someone they were paying $85,000 a year and it wasn't working so they're looking for an outsource provider and they need somebody ASAP because things are falling apart and they've got an investor presentation in six weeks. Well, let's just start talking about working with them as a CFO because the need is there. And so you can go ahead and pivot if you see a different need. Um, and you're going to figure that out pretty early on in the middle of the call. But even still in that situation, if you were going in thinking you were to sell a roadmap, you could still do roadmap to CFO. But sometimes you'll get people that are just so hot and ready that you just go for the full kit and caboodle. Right? You just go for everything. Or you switch to a totally different point. You get on the call and you realize, well, this person is doing 100000 a year in gross sales. Or maybe they're doing 50000 a year in gross sales. But they think they're going to grow. But they don't, they don't feel like, like, I don't think they're going to do a tax plan. But they need, or I, don't, I don't want to do tax plans, so I could do financial coaching. right? And they're, they're, gonna do, they're doing 50,000, they need to get QuickBooks set up, they need to figure out how to pay themselves, they need to figure out what to set aside for taxes, they need a budget, they need projections. Maybe that's what they need based on where they are. So how do you change the service you're gonna offer? Think first, what does the client need? That's what I would say. And it sounds simple, but I mean, I don't know about you guys, that took me a long time to figure out. I was like, oh, you gotta sell, you gotta sell, you gotta sell. It's like, oh, wow. As soon as I figured out, just attach yourself to the diagnosis, everything became, there's a lot less pressure. So one thing we're gonna do here for the next few minutes, we're gonna tally up the appointments, okay? Just for the next few minutes, okay? We got one, who else has an appointment? I wanna know when we get him in. We got another one here. And you'll see him over the next few hours start to trickle in. And I wanna see how many appointments we can get just using energy, right? You got one, Jonathan? I love it. Now, here's the thing, An is the answer right now. You got it? Answer, answer, answer. <laughs> Hi, this is, this is uh, Andrew Argue from Jonathan's office. How's it going? Hi, Jonathan? No, this is Andrew. Uh, I work with Jonathan, actually. I just, I just spoke with him. He's walking into a client meeting. Uh, but he said he wants to set up an appointment uh, with you on Friday. Do you have uh, 1 p.m. available? For what? For, for what? You'll see. We've got a special surprise for you. No, don't, don't, don't tell me like that. I don't like to sell stuff. What are you looking it's for? super. It's... It's, it's... Well, what, is, what kind of business you are, you, are, you are selling now? No, I work with Jonathan. Jonathan, he's in, he, we run an accounting firm. We do taxes, we do accounting. Oh, fuck. Oh, don't, don't even call me, okay? I'm so busy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh. See, right there. It's not a good day. I always tell my team, it's not a good day till you get hung up on. Right? <laughs> it's not a good day till you get hung up on right there. So see, guys, right there, it doesn't even matter. Right? It doesn't even matter. That is going to happen. Right? 
You will reach out to somebody, somebody will get offended, somebody will throw a hissy fit. Oh, you're trying to sell me, ah, da, 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 da. right? It's not a good day till you get hung up on. Now, the reality of it is, right, he probably would have got the appointment had I not butted in on his deal, right? But it doesn't matter. Dude, there's a ton of fish in the sea.